Hi there and a very warm welcome to this week's episode in which I'm trying to go back to the roots in that I'm trying to compact one small single piece of information that might be beneficial for you. So this week we are talking about the composite texture inside of Cinema 3D and Octane. And the culprit for that is actually Patrick Lavar, who asked me about that in Blender. And then I realized that I never talked about it in Cinema 4D and Octane. So if you watched my previous episode with the compositing notes, this is something very similar, but for textures. So let's strap up and, well, buckle up, I mean, and let's keep going. Alrighty, let's see what we are going to do today. As I just said in the beginning, when you're coming from the Octane composite tutorial, the link is in the upper right corner, by the way then you will feel right at home here. So let's have a look what we're going to do. So what do we have here? We have a logo stenciled out by an alpha on top of a swirly UE map. This might not be what you call a practical example, but I wanted just to show you what the composite texture is capable of. So for example, we can unswirl our UV map here or actually go to our logo and unalpha it so we just see our logo and then make it brighter or darker. Here we go. And of course we can, if we adjust that, bring in our alpha again and look at the final result. To give a more practical example, I brought in one of the knobs of my latest Blender project that is Silverwing Console. You can find it in the upper right corner. And what I did to the knob is dirty it up a bit. So let's have a look at the texture here. If you know this channel for a longer time, I usually use vertex maps to give my objects dirt and scratches, and this is no different here. So the only difference comes in with the use of the composite texture. So for example, what you can do is grow and shrink the dirt here via a gamma, and also animate it if you like. If we go down here, there is the scratch map input. So what we can do here is really fine tune our scratches and define what we want to look at. So the map range here, as well as the gamma will control how the scratches will look on our object. And this is all thanks to our composite texture here. This scene will be available on my Patreon, though I have to say this could have been textured so much better. So this is just a demonstration case here. Okay, let's have a look how the composite texture is built up with all its layers and facets. Okay, small surprise, Photoshop time here. So I think this is the best I can get you to understand the layering system within the composite texture inside of Octane. By the way, not making a 30 minute tutorial feels a little bit like cheating. Hopefully you don't feel cheated on and this gives you enough value for a great experience down the line. So the layer system in Photoshop is very similar to the composite texture in Octane. Let's go over it real quick. We have another layer here and if we click that, of course it's opaque and totally covers what's underneath. But we have blend modes, so we can choose different blend modes to blend between those both layers or even more layers. And also we have alphas, so if we then just get an alpha on the layer, then the dark parts of the alpha will become transparent and we can see underneath. And of course, last but not least, this don't excludes us from using blend modes, so we can still use those on top. And this is basically exactly how the composite texture works, but in a node space instead of something like this. So let's go over to Cinema 4D and have a look. Let's build up the scene real quick. So we need a environment, a texture environment and an HGI environment. And we want to have the HGI environment showing our Maxim Ross HGI that I always use. Here we go, let's drag this in. And then we go to our texture environment and actually set it to black and also set it to be visible environment. Here we go. Also turn off those environments for the viewport. So we have a normal viewport display. Then let's make a cube and go to the cube properties, make the object slightly rounded, maybe a little bit larger fillet 15 and with a subdivisions of five. Here we go. Last but not least, let's make a material here. So very simple, a diffuse material. 
that will show up here and then drag it on top of the cube and we'll call it composite text. Here we go. Now let's see if everything worked out by rendering. And yes, we see our cube here. Nice. All right, if that didn't pop up for you, let's go to get active material and then it should be there. And then we are already ready to bring in our composite texture. So you can do that by hitting tab and search here, or you can scroll down and find it in the list. And there it is. Note that there are two entries, but you need to bring in the above entry here. I want to connect it to the diffuse as we want to do the exact same thing as we did in Photoshop, just so you can see the way it works. For now, this has no input here, but we can make one by getting to add a layer and you greet it with a whole plethora of things, but for now, we just go with a texture. Now, we want to keep on going in the direction we did in Photoshop, so let's bring in our UV map as a ground layer. Here we go. Let's connect it to the texture slot here, and you should see it appearing on our cube. Next, let's just create a second texture layer here. Here we go. And then create our other texture here from our logo. Here we go. Also texture. And again, same as in Photoshop, as this is opaque, it doesn't show the UV map underneath. Next, let's actually find the blend modes. And those are inside of the texture here, blend mode. And you can see there's a whole plethora of them again. And there's even more than you can see. The list extends to more than half of what you see on screen to the off screen area down here. So Otoy really did their job and collected all the possible blend modes there are. I think there are no more than here in this list. All right, let's try out some. So for example, add or blend, then blends this logo in. And for example, lighten would do almost the same. Also, what we can do is try multiply. So let's go up here. Here we go. It's the same as in Photoshop with the same result. Now let's set this back to mix normal and then create our alpha. So what we need to do is bring this up here a little bit and then bring in our alpha here. And to apply it to the logo, what we can do is just go and add this to the opacity. And here we go, we have our logo on top of the UV map. Okay, next, as in Photoshop, let's get a exposure going. So what we need to do is get yet another layer. So add a layer and not a texture this time, but an exposure, here we go. And if we go to the exposure, we can then adjust the exposure for the whole underlying layers. If you only want the exposure to be affecting the logo, what we can do easily is just use the opacity here. And then if we change it, then only our logo is affected. But we can also do that another way that is really important for you to learn. And this is using groups. So instead of the exposure, let's get rid of that real quick. So let's go to our shader, remove layer, and then add another layer and this time a group then we need to add a layer to get the texture slot here. So add layer texture, and we can forget about this one here, and then just add in that layer here, and make it like this. Now we need to put the opacity in here instead, because this is the last layer that is then connected to the whole composite texture. And now if we add a layer here, now there's a menu missing. So this is the menu where you choose what layer to add. So if we add a layer here, we can actually change the mode, what the layer is doing here. So now we have to find the exposure here, which is here. And then we have made ourselves a group with a exposure layer. So now we are just affecting the group with our exposure. So let's show you by going to the exposure. And basically it's the same what we did before, but this is not limited to this amount of layers. We can layer all sorts of stuff on top of each other here. Again, to stay true to our Photoshop example, what I can show you now is that we are still able to blend mode everything on top of this here. So when we go to the last layer that is connected to our composite texture, there's the blend mode again. So we can, for example, color burn, not sure what it's doing, but you can see it has an effect on the rendering. 
And this would be already it, but this channel wouldn't be this channel without a bonus, so let's take our knob and make the chipped away paint real quick. First of all, let's begin by making those vertex weights. So let's go to one of the knobs here, this one, then go to edge mode, then UL, and then just lazily select those edges here. And then what we are going to do is go to select and set vertex weight and then set it to 100% here. So this is very lazy. Let's also do the top here for just the completeness sake. Also go to select set vertex weight 100 for the top here too. And then what we're going to do is call this vertex map convex. Here we go. Feel free to refine this to your liking. For now, this is good enough for me. What might be important to know is that this method works best with a subdivision surface modeled mesh where you have supporting edges on both sides of the actual edge. If you have another structure of mesh, then maybe you can try the dirt node with the invert option ticked and therefore get the edge show up in your shader. Speaking of shader, let's actually make the shader by going to materials and then create and then actually create a composite material since this is a composite between a layer of paint and the underlying metal. Let's go back into object mode and actually go inside of the shader here. Here we go. Let's set up the material by giving it a proper name. Gray paint, here we go. And then also add in those layers. So let's click here, then go to material one and make it material two and make it. So material one is going to be our paint and material two is going to be our metal. Here we go. Then both should have a GGX energy preserving and then the metal should of course be metallic. As the last step of the process, let's assign the material here and then go into the diffuse and actually make it dark gray. So 0.1 for example, here we go. Now we don't care about surface imperfections here. This is just a showcase how to get the chipped away edge here. So let's just go to roughness here and make it for example 0.25 and for the paint as well. Let's bring in our vertex weight here. We can do that by going to the nodes tab and then search for the attribute texture. I've done that before. Then disable the preview because we don't need it. And then what we need to do is copy over the name of the vertex weight to our node here and then plug it into the diffuse and see if it works. No, it's not working. And this is because we have to set it to float because this is a vertex weight, not a vertex color. Let's actually bring in the star of the show, which is the composite texture. So here we go. And then maybe render and let's connect it to the upper material here, which is visible so we can see what we are doing. What I want to do here is create two layers and those are two groups. So one group would be for the attribute texture and one group would be for the variance that varies the chipped away edges here. So within each group, we also need two layers. So let's create those, here we go. And then we can already plug in the attribute here and then maybe fin out the layer here. Here we go. So we can see what we're doing. To create this variance here, we are going to use a noise. So hit tab and then search for the octane noise here. I already did that before as well. And then plug that into the texture down here. Now this object here is UV unwrapped, but if we adjust the opacity of this texture real quick so we can see the noise, obviously every UV also has seams. So what's actually better here is go to a projection and then project it XYZ to UVW. This will make the noise 3D. And then we will just scale it down again because that usually makes it bigger. So 0.1 was a good fit for my project. Next, let's actually talk about those layers because they are not there to bring in other textures, but to modify our textures here. So for this above layer, I opted for a map range. Here we go. And then go there. And for the lower layer here, I opted for a gamma curve. Here we go. Now, last but not least, what we need to do is go and get 
our blend mode ready, there I opted for a hard mix. So you can already see this is giving us either black or white, which is perfect for chipped away metal edges. So let's modify this a little bit by first going to our noise and actually make the octaves higher so we get a little bit more detail and get to the omega and also make this a little bit higher so we emphasize those octaves. Next, what we can do is go to our map range and then go to the output minimum and actually shrink that down. Oh, and by the way, if nothing's happening, this is because of the opacity we formally set to zero. So let's have it affect our scene by going to the opacity of one. And now you can see it's doing something. So we have those edges where nothing is chipped away actually. And then what we also can do is go to our gamma and then change this to set the width of our chipped away edges. So you can play around with that and find the perfect tune for this. For example, something like that looks really nice. As a last step, as we don't want to have this in our diffuse, but to distinguish between our paint and our metal, we need to grab this and take this to our mask here. And now you can see we have a chipped away metal edge. Of course, you can season this in all sorts of ways. For example, make variants in the roughness of the material. Also take the output from here and shove it into the bump of both materials. Now, this is very unrefined. Now you can see our edges looked a little bit more chipped away because of the bump on the edge. All right, I hope you liked this short little tutorial. And of course, the bonus leaves me with thanking those who made this all possible, which obviously are my Patreons. Especially my 50 euro tier subscribers, Shields Augustinen and Leon Studio TV. I can only repeat myself and really thank you for your massive support. Also, my 15 euro tier subscribers, AB Studio, Render King Alessandro Bonchio, Alessio De Vecchi, Bavana, BVR, Chris Fritchie, Christian Grajewski, Computer Generated, Erbe Plus Academy, George Luna, Harris Pavaskar, Choi Chikulin, Just a Frickin, Chris Clemson, Ludger, Nico Straub, Part 1 of 2, Quark Andang, Raiko, Renato Marcus, Reshock, Shamus Johnson, Shiro, 2049, Terry Wayne Ranson, Yasin Rupp, and Shibor Shang. A second warm welcome to our small after credit party. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something. If you have ideas for follow up videos, let me know down in the comments below. As always, thank you so very much for staying with me that long. In honor of the layer blend modes, let's use add, subtract and multiply for example. So let's post mathematical emoticons in the comments down below. With that, thank you once more and I wish you the best start into the week, an amazing week and happy compositing. Bye.